Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, we are uh, very happy to, uh, to, to see you even online uh, on behalf on the organization committee and uh, of this uh, webinar uh, and uh, all the members of uh, the Tunisian Association of Pediatric Surgery Board. Uh, I would like to express my sincere uh, thanks for all the participants in this uh, webinar. I would like to uh, thank uh, our uh, invited uh, speakers, uh, Dr. Siru Esposito from Italy, Dr. Yusra Karni from uh, Tunis, Tunisia, Dr. Nahal Akshish, uh, Monastir, Tunisia, and uh, we will speak uh, in this webinar about uh, anguinal hernia in children. Is that uh, is is it that simple? uh many uh, and three topics uh, we can uh, uh, our speakers can speak uh, about so to uh, um, to moderate this uh, this webinar uh, i must uh, greet our leader dr uh, nuri abdul tif so we uh, he helps uh, us to uh, moderate this webinar and uh, my friend uh, Professor Dr. Amin Qsia uh, from Monastir so to moderate this, uh, this webinar. I must uh, thank our partner, uh, Pharmalist Laboratories, and uh, all the members of the board of uh, the Tunisian Association, of, uh, Tunisian Association of Pediatric Surgery for uh, the, uh, the participation and uh, to organize this webinar. Um, uh, we must uh, uh, also thank many thanks for uh, Dr. Uh, Riyad Jwini uh, uh, because for his participation to motivate all the residents to participate in this uh, webinar. Uh, so I uh, let the, the I invite Dr. Nuri to to uh, to present our. Uh, uh, guest uh, Dr. Uh, Siru uh, Esposito, and uh, um, just uh, for uh, uh, one remark for for the question, you must uh, all the participants must uh, use the, the button uh, Q, Q and R uh, for the question, and all the question uh, uh, will be uh, answered uh, in in the end of after the three uh, topics. So, uh, Dr. Nuri, uh, you can present uh, our our guest, Dr. Ciro Esposito. Your micro, 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 Dr. Nuri. Okay. Good afternoon or good uh, evening. It's uh, a great pleasure for me to, to introduce our friend Ciro Esposito. Uh, I have known him probably 15 years ago, and he's always the same. <laughs> Physically, mentally, scientifically, everything. You know. um, Professor uh, Shiro Esposito is Surgeon in Chief and Director of the Department of Pediatric Surgery at the University of Naples, Federico II. Shiro is a reviewer of a variety of surgical journals and edi editors of more than 10 books of pediatric surgery and pediatric minimally invasive surgery. He is the director of mi minimally invasive surgery and robotic pediatric courses at the University of Naples. I will simplify because I know it will take a lot of time and I will just specify something important I consider. Uh, this thing is that he, his research activities include application of augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and the tele-monitoring uh, of pediatric min minimally invasive surgery, robotic surgery, endurology, and new techniques in minimally invasive surgery. This will give certainly many interesting ideas to all of us and to young pediatric surgeon. Finally, Chiro has participated in the success of many meetings organized in, uh, in, by the Tunisian Association of Pediatric Surgery 
and he has always encouraged collaboration between all pediatric surgeons in all the world. And this will give us a good opportunity today to thank him sincerely. If Shiro is ready, it will be a pleasure to listen to him. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's a, a, a true pleasure and an honor for me to be here, above all, to meet all friends as uh, Professor Nouri, new friends uh, as uh, of the, the Tunisian Association of Pediatric Surgery. I will share my screen. I hope that you can see my screen. And uh, uh, my talk will be focused uh, on uh, laparoscopic uh, uh, hernia repair in pediatric patients. Uh, 25 years ago, we developed with Philippe, avec, with Philippe Montupé uh, a, a surgical technique in laparoscopy. And I will show you a little bit the technique and the results. The laparoscopic closure of inguinal hernia is uh, uh, the same principle of open repair, but the only difference is that you close the sac from inside, not from outside. I have the pleasure to start my laparoscopic activity 30 years ago. I was a trainee or, of Michel Carcassonne in, in Marseille, and I started my laparoscopic activity with him. I think uh, that the main advantage of laparoscopy as for inguinal hernia repair is the clear anatomy. Because as you know, we have three type of hernia, uh, classic oblique external hernia in the majority of cases, then a direct hernia or femoral hernia. And in laparoscopy, you can clearly identify them. Above all, because in the majority of patients, you have uh, an indirect hernia, oblique external, in more than 90% of cases, but you can have rare hernias and sometimes the association of two types of hernia in the same patients. And uh, in laparoscopy, it's easy to identify and to treat them. As I told you, to treat uh, hernia in laparoscopy is a question of philosophy because uh, this is in laparoscopy, we use the same principle, the eye ligation of peritoneal vaginal duct, but with a different approach. In uh, via inguinal, we treat from outside, in laparoscopy from the inside. But I think that laparoscopic approach has a lot of advantages compared to open approach. As for technique, you need uh, for sure an optic. Uh, of five millimeter uh, of zero degree, and then three uh, millimeter instruments. In general, you need uh, two needle holders and one pair of scissors. And then we prefer to close uh, the sac with a non-absorbable suture of three or four zero. This is uh, the three millimeter step that we adopt uh, in laparoscopy. Above all, if you treat uh, newborns or infants, uh, it's important to fix the trocar to the skin. For this reason, if you have three millimeter trocars with a smooth um, cannula, we have to put a piece of nilatone catheter on the cannula and then fix with a stitch on the skin. Or I prefer to use the screw trocars that are more stable on the skin. In this, in this way, you avoid guys leak around the cannula during the procedure. And then uh, the, the, it's important uh, uh, that you have to notch intracorporeally because uh, you have to perform a poor string suture around the, the um, uh, peritoneal vaginal duct. For this reason, you have to need intracorporeally. For this reason, it's important to be able to notch intracorporeally without problem. This is the position of the patients on the operative table. Uh, it depends if the hernia is uh, monolateral or bilateral. The, the surgeon can be contralateral to the pathology or at the head of the patients with the monitor uh, at the, on the feet of the patients. 
uh, the, the classic position of the choker in triangulation. Umbilical optic introduced in uh, open laparoscopy plus the two trokers in triangulation. Uh, I think that the history of uh, inguinal hernia and laparoscopy is uh, linked to these uh, two names. So one is my teacher, is Philippe Montoupé, and we described in 93 the technique that we published on the Journal de Cellular Chirurgy. And five years after, uh, Felix Scheer used the same technique. I will show you the difference between the two techniques. The Montoupé technique, that the technique that I prefer, is a poor string suture around the internal orifice. And the Scheer technique is an N shaped suture around the internal inguinal orifice. But the long term result of both techniques are absolutely the same. I think that uh, a key point uh, of uh, the technique is to cut uh, the periorificial peritoneum uh, around uh, the internal inguinal orifice in this way, the distal part of the sac collapses. I will show you the technique in the videos. As I told you, we prefer to use non resor bubble suture of a three or four zero. I prefer to use uh, eti bond suture and uh, uh, three uh, eight needles of uh, 17, 20 millimeter of length. And as for the steps of the technique, we have to check the patency of peritoneal vaginal duct. You have to section, I prefer to section with the crochet the periorificial peritoneum with the hook. Then you have to introduce the needle, considering that you use a three millimeter instrument, you have to introduce the needle transparently. Then you have to perform a pull string suture around the orifice, and then you have to check the result and to remove the needle. I will show you the technique with some videos. Above all, uh, in, in newborns, uh, sometimes you have incarcerated hernia, this is the hernia on the right side. There is an ovary inside. And in laparoscopy, also thanks to the myorelaxation, is easy to reduce the ovary inside the abdominal cavity. Then a key point of the technique is to section the periorificial peritoneum before closing uh, with a pull string suture uh, the peritoneum because in this way there is you have no tension on your suture and above all the distal part of the sap collapses. I prefer to use the crochet or the uc, but if you want you can use the scissor to do it. Considering uh, that uh, we use three millimeter instrument as for the needle you have to introduce the needle transparently. Uh, it's easy to do it and you can introduce. Uh, and above all, uh, the uh, etibone suture is green for this reason is a good contrast with the background. For this reason, it's easy to use it and you can easily identify it. For this reason, you have to introduce the needle transparently and then you have uh, to start the suture. This is uh, a girl in the girl, it's easier because uh, in girls, uh, you have no risk for um, uh, uh, inner spermatic vessels have a vast deference. You can put uh, in the pull string also the round ligament. And I think it's easy techniques to perform. You need a few minutes. You perform a pull string around the uh, internal inguinal orifice and then you close uh, with uh, uh, a couple of uh, intracorporeal knot. And as I told you, the advantage of the girl is that you have no risk for vas deferens and for inner spermatic vessels. This is uh, a boy. Uh, you can see the technique. Uh, after cutting the periorificial peritoneum, you have to perform the pulsing. Pay attention to avoid uh, put, uh, 
we in uh, in the suture also was deference in our spermatic vessels. As you can see, we put the peritoneum on the tip of the needle. This is a, a, a real time procedure for this season. We need to perform the, the pull string no, mo no more than one minute. You perform, you complete the pull string and then you can close it. And as I told you, it's important to use uh, a green suture, a, a colored suture that you have uh, a very good view with the background. And then you can close with a couple of uh, intracorporeal knotting. And then this is another case. I think it is important to remember that when you perform the pulsing suture in a boy, it's important to avoid vas deference. Please keep the vas deference always under your eyes. As you can see, you put only the peritoneum, avoid the pitching the vas deference and inner spermatic vessels. It's important this maneuver to put the peritoneum on the tip of the needle. And then you have to, to perform intracorporeal knotting, I think is the is the, the key the key point of the technique. You have to be able to, to knot it without problem. As I told you, uh, you can find in about 40% of cases a contralateral patency. For this reason, in laparoscopy, you can suture both uh, uh, sides. Sometimes, uh, as you, in this case, you have uh, uh, two different orifices. You have uh, uh, the so-called uh, hernia and pantalon, uh, oblique external defect and a direct defect, you can find them and then close uh, with two different stitches. In case of incarcerated hernia, you can uh, reduce easily the hernia and you can see you have the colon inside and you can reduce uh, the uh, loops uh, and you can reduce it. And uh, thanks to my relaxation, it is easy to perform the reduction. And then another advantage is in case of incarcerated hernia, you can check the loops status because uh, if there is an incarcerated hernia, sometimes there is a risk that you have some uh, vascular damage to the loops. For this reason, after the reduction, you can check if the loops are well before closing the uh, hernia and you can check the, the loops uh, as I showed you. Then you can have rare hernias. This is a case of uh, uh, direct hernia. You have two different orifices. You have, you can see the uh, lateral ligament of the bladder and you can see you have two huge orifices. The internal inguinal ring is over there and you can see this is a, a direct hernia that you can discover. There is always a huge lipoma inside and I think these rare hernias is easy to identify and easy to treat in laparoscopy. Or in this picture, you can see there is the appendix inside on the right side, and you can reduce uh, the appendix uh, into the abdominal cavity. If there is adhesion, sometimes it's necessary to perform an appendectomy, but you can perform it in laparoscopy. And then this is another case. This is on the right side of uh, hernia and pantalon. There are, there are two different orifices. You can see a lower orifice and upper orifice. And you can clearly identify the two different orifices in laparoscopy. I think it's easier to do it compared to open surgery. And then you can treat them closing with a pearl string. And this is another case of direct hernia. You can see in this position, there is a, the internal inguinal ring. And this is the direct, a huge direct hernia. And as I told you, there is always a lipoma, a huge lipoma that you have to resect. And then you have to close the defect with a poor string. For this reason, I think the main advantage in case of rare hernias is that you can easily identify and then to treat them. 
As for tip and tricks, I think, uh, uh, as I told you, you have to introduce uh, the needle transparently, but it's easier to remove the needle through um, umbilical orifice at the end of procedure to avoid risk. For this reason, you can exteriorize the instrument with uh, the suture, and then you can remove the needle through the umbilicus without problem. The key point of technique is the patient's preparation before surgery, above all in newborns. You have to perform a couple of enemas. We give a semeticon to deflate the intestinal loops. And for sure, before operating the patient, you have to empty the bladder with a nelaton catheter. The result, also in newborns, there are excellent uh, aesthetical result. And I think the main advantage is that using laparoscopy, above all uh, in patients under three years of age, you have less wound infection because uh, the skin, uh, the trochars um, insertion are uh, out of the deeper. For this reason, there is a less wound infection then you can manage a contralateral patency that is present in about 40% of patients. And you can have a easy reduction of uh, uh, difficult turnus. Then it's important that you can check the loops after reduction. And as I, as I told you, in case there is an appendix inside the inguinal ring and there are some addition, you can perform a transumbilical appendectomy. And these are the results of the literature. These are the uh, Piero review. And uh, uh, for his review, uh, there is higher complication in open surgery compared to laparoscopy. And we published with Philippe Montupé some papers in which we show that the incidence of recurrence is very, very low. And there are a lot of advantage. Uh, a couple of years ago, I published my series of uh, inguinal hernia via laparoscopy on about uh, uh, 2,000 hernia repairs. And you can see the result. You can discover in uh, about 3% of 3, 4% of patients, you can discover a rare hernias. And as for the incidence of recurrence, as you can see, we have a total recurrence rate of 0.3%, but in the last 950 patients, we have zero recurrence. For this reason, it's a, a safe technique and effective technique to perform. I have the pleasure to collaborate with, with Allcomb, and we publish a review on this topic, and I will give you only the result. We, we compare the paper published on the literature uh, as for the difference between laparoscopic repair of inguinal hernia and open repair. As for the recurrence rate, the rate um, of recurrence after open and laparoscopic repair is absolutely similar, statistically not significant. As for the operative time, in case of monolateral hernia, the time of surgery is the same, but in case of bilateral hernia, laparoscopy is faster. And then in laparoscopy, there are less complications than in open surgery. And above all, in case of in difficult hernias or incarcerated hernia, laparoscopy is easier compared to open surgery. And we published with the group of Felix Scheer a paper about the treatment of hernia in young babies less of three kilos. And we have excellent result. And our, our result is that uh, inguinal hernia uh, is uh, feasible and safe and probably for the surgeon above all in newborn is less technically demanding than open inguinal repair. For this reason, in my opinion, uh, laparoscopy approach seems to be better at least of over procedural benefit. I would like to thank you for your invitation. As you know, uh, I am the CEO of European Society of Pediatric Endoscopy Surgery. And together with the president, uh, Mario Mendoza, and uh, Nasia Ken Lan Dunlop, we decided to organize uh, a master of pediatric minimal surgery devoted to uh, African surgeon. 
and we will start this master is a bilingual master in, uh, in of miss of french and english that we have the possibility to follow in both languages to cover all african countries and uh, it will be free of charge for all african surgeons that are espes members and at the special rate on 25 euro and at the end of the master there will be an exam to receive the title of master in european master in pediatric miss and uh, uh, six people of this master will be receiving in addition a free registration for uh, espes and dorset courses that i will organize in naples next year in uh, july urology and robotic course on a pig model and in october for laparoscopic neonatal course on a rabbit model thank you very much for your attention thank you thank you very much uh, dear uh, Ciro, for this uh, great presentation and uh, all the question uh, we are, uh, uh, you will uh, respond in, in the end of the, of the presentation. So uh, we can we pass for the next uh, presentation and I will uh, present uh, Dr. Uh, Yusra Kirkni. Uh, she will speak about uh, clinical and uh, therapeutic aspect of inguinal hernia in children. Uh, is it always of use? Uh, Dr. Yusra Karkhni is an uh, associate professor of pediatric surgery in uh, uh, Sadun uh, Hospital uh, in Tunis, uh, 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 hospital for uh, children. So, uh, Dr. Karkhni, uh, you can go in. Thank you, Dr. Sahnoun. It's a pleasure to be here with you. So, I will share my presentation. It's okay. So, okay, yeah. So, pediatric surgeons deal with inguinal hernias on a regular basis. Uh, while most of these are simple in terms of diagnosis and therapy, uh, occasionally uh, what initially sounds like a routine case turns out to be a perplexing uh, situation. So, this conference discusses rare and unusual findings in the groin area that may mimic an indirect inguinal hernia but are not. Uh, it also discusses challenging treatment situation about uh, hernia. So uh, inguinal hernia is the most common surgical condition in children. This is not a parietal problem itself, but the persistence of the permeability of the physiological uh, process. Uh, I will just recall in a few words the embryology of this pathology. So the occurrence of indirect inguinal hernia is related to the descent of the testis, which allows the, the bernaculum testis at as it descends from an intra-abdominal retroperitoneal position to the scrotum. As the testis passes through the internal ring, it pulls along the diverticulum of peritoneum on its anterior medial surface, referred to as the peritoneal vaginal process. Indirect inguinal hernia is resulting from failure of the peritoneal vaginal process to close prenatally during fetal development. Uh, in girls, the equivalent to the precise vaginalis is known as the canal of NAC, which follows the round ligament of the uterus that passes through the inguinal canal and extends into the labia majora. So the layers of the process of vaginalis normally fuse in more than 80% of full term entrance, um, obliterating the entrance into the inguinal canal. Failure of obliteration may result in a variety of inguinal scrotal anomalies, including complete persistence resulting in an inguinal hernia. To provide good and effective care, pediatric surgeons should be readily familiar with the possible differential diagnosis of these entities and their specific management. So the overall incidence of inguinal hernia is about 1 um, uh, to, to uh, 4%. Uh, inguinal hernia occurs nine times more commonly in boys than in girls, uh, with the majority occurring on the right side. Left-sided hernias are less common followed by bilateral inguinal uh, hernia. Male gender and prematurity have also been identified as risk factors for incarceration. Uh, it's seen in 15% uh, in children born before 33 gestational week, 
and in 30% in children and babies weighing less than uh, one kilogram, resulting from failure of the peritoneal vaginal process. This is the normal inguinal hernia in children, lateral to the epigastric vessel covered by parents. Uh, incarcerated inguinal, um, an, an inguinal hernia is defined as incarcerated when the content fails to return. Inguinal hernia should usually remain a clinical diagnosis and prompt immediate exploration. There is no need for further additional exams one of the most common congenital anomalies occurring in sex to 58 percent of newborn males and called hydrocele uh, which also called cord cyst so is it as simple as that um although hernias are some of the most common pathology that pediatric surgeon encounters in some cases the exact diagnosis can be challenging uh, therefore, every pediatric surgeon should know uh, about rare and unusual hernias along with their presentation and uh, treatment. So these rare hernia are about the type of hernia and the unusual. So uh, we, um, we performed the descriptive retrospective study of rare cases of hernias operated on in our department between 2015 and 2020. Um, this uh, review gives an overview about the different types of unusual hernias in the re inguinal region, uh, along with the differential diagnosis of other etiology presenting as inguinal swelling or uh, pain. It also describes therapeutic options for these rare uh, conditions. Uh, so out of 1,316 children operated on for inguinal hernia, we found 16 rare hernias. Uh, we should say that in, uh, we started only in the two last years the, uh, the laparoscopic approach and, and we and went 43 uh, inguinal uh, hernia. So we we'll start with rare type of uh, hernia. We found um, six patients with direct hernia. Uh, you should know that uh, direct hernia is the most common atypical inguinal hernia in infancy. Uh, they are uh, congenital or posterior floor of the inguinal canal that allows abdominal content to protrude, protrude through the uh, fascia. So we found also uh, three hernia recurrence uh, as up to a third or even half of all recurrences had direct hernias. So the question is why were they correctly diagnosed the second time but missed the first time? And was the surgeon doing the second operation more experienced? So as an acquired direct hernia, it was suspected that they may be a signal sequence of surgical injury caused by the flow of the canal during the initial uh, repair. The incidence of direct hernia is about two to three percent of all inguinal hernias. They are more common on the, the right uh, side. The lineage of division between indirect hernia and indirect hernia or medial hernia are the epigastric vessels. The inguinal ligament is clearly visible as the ridge running horizontally. It forms the lower margin of both direct and indirect hernia. Direct hernia uh, can be suspected clinically if the bulge is noted medial to the internal inguinal ring. Intraoperatively, it should be suspected if no significant indirect hernia site is found and the opening is medial to the epigastric vessel during laparoscopic exploration. The classic open operation for direct inguinal hernia in children is the McVay operation. Uh, it's about approximation of the transverse fascia to the pectineal ligament, and it is important to repair the entire transverse facial defect to prevent uh, recurrence. On laparoscopy, as the professor Esposito uh, said uh, earlier, uh, we performed a rejection of the lipoma, then the defect was closed by means of separated stitches using non-absorbable 3 uh, zero, uh, suture. Uh, we used also the physical ligament as an autonomous patch to reinforce the closure. Uh, this physical ligament allowed an easy closure. We found also one patient with pantaloon uh, hernia, which is a concomitant epilateral direct and indirect inguinal hernia. It's also ca uh, called saddlebag uh, hernia. And the 
cases of this kind of hernia are about uh, 0.5 percent of all inguinal hernias. So, um, uh, um, in, in most cases, we found a large direct inguinal hernia and a small indirect inguinal hernia. So, the hernia is named pantaloon because the two hernia sacs are divided by the epigastric vessels and so gives the appearance similar to a typical pair of pants from the 17th century. With pantaloon hernia usually present with a bulge in the ground, uh, they are at particular risk of incarceration and are at risk of developing recurrence of uh, repair. Uh, we found and the, diag the, the, the diagnostic modality were intraoperative um, diagnosis. Unusual findings in the hernia sac. So we found six, seven patients with amniotic hernia. Uh, it's a rare type of hernia in which the appendix is located inside the hernia sac. Uh, a diagnosis is very difficult in the preoperative period. It's commonly diagnosed as an ordinary incarcerated hernia as for our series where the situation was found in four cases. There are four different clinical presentations. We can uh, see a normal inguinal hernia, uh, a non-reductible or incarcerated inguinal hernia, an acute scrotum or abdominal pain with undefined groin pain, and only late in and if the appendix is not inflamed, the appendectomy is debatable. For some authors, uh, in children with amniotic hernia, yeah, the presence of a non-inflamed appendix in the inguinal canal occurs three times more often than in adults. Pairing of a normal appendix is our is our fluid tissue, uh, and the appendectomy will be performed in the appendix if the appendix is uh, inflamed. Uh, here we present a very interesting case of a five-year-old boy with a history of left recurrent hydrocele operated on twice. On examination, a mass was identified in hypogastric region, and external genital examination was suggested of recurrent from communicating left vaginal hydrocele. Abdominal ultrasound showed a well-defined and echoic cystic mass, teeth of a floating membrane an intraperitoneal edatid cyst located above and behind the bladder, and the complete persistent pair of the peritoneal vaginal process were concluded. So we underwent laparotomy uh, and mass arising from seaweed colon. We performed pair technique with internal internal ring, the inguinal oral canal, and a very careful dissection of the structure of the cord was performed to isolate the processes. The communication was ligated at the internal ring. So it was an urinating mesenteric edatid through the um, inguinal canal. Uh, here also an, another interesting uh, finding, an unusual finding in the sac, it was an eight-year-old boy uh, presented with left incarcerated uh, hernia. Uh, the surgery revealed two purple red firm encapsulated muscles uh, a first mass two centimeter long, adding to the upper pole of the testicle, uh, but separated from it by a cleavage plan. And the second mass was uh, four centimeter um, long. Fusiform attached to the first one by a fibrous cord. Uh, its superior pole extended inside the peritoneum. The presence of the second mass, its extension inside the peritoneum, and the presence of a well individualized cleavage plan suggested benign nature. We started with the exercises of the very limited mass, which had been sent for extemporaneous examination. It revealed an expected, a benign, as expected, a benign tissue without specifying its nature. We proceeded with the opening of the peritoneum and the excision of the superior mass as high as it could be reached without orchiectomy. Uh, pathology concluded to an ectopic splenic tissue, and the excised specimen was free from testicular tissue. Uh, it was a splenogonadal uh, fusion, uh, which is a rare abnormal uh, congenital connection of splenic tissue and gonads. 
The second case, it's about seven year old boy presented with strangulated left her uh, inguinal hernia. The hernia sac was thickened, contained a sigmoid colon of good vitality, and both were lost about peritoneal tuberculosis. So one question that is discussed in the hernia sac, since the vast majority of hernia sac merely comprise peritoneum without findings that impact on future management of the patient, routine pathologic evaluation is generally found not to be uh, in some conditions that are associated with increased intra-abdominal fluid, such as ventricular peritoneal shunt, the tip of ventricular peritoneal shunt may migrate into the scrotum through a patent processes. So there are uh, usual findings in the hernia site, uh, such, such as lateral hernia or richter hernia or uh, metal hernia. Uh, we'll discuss a little bit about the treatment of inguinal uh, hernia. Um, the classic operative technique is through a transverse uh, inguinal approach, identification of the sac in the spermatic port, ligation and division of the sac at the level of the internal ring. Care must be taken to avoid damage to the other part of the structure. And in centers that consider the legation of the hernia sac as the standard surgical treatment for inguinal hernia repair, this question can be asked, uh, should be uh, open or not the external oblique uh, muscle fascia? So there are two techniques, the Gross and Ferguson technique, uh, which opens the external oblique muscle fascia and allows the surgeon to properly explore for high ligation of the sac in the inner uh, ring. The Mitchell Banks technique, which allows to avoid injuring the ilioinguinal nerve and weakening of the posterior wall of the inguinal uh, canal. Studies showed that the rate of recurrence was not different. Um, th this is uh, a case in turn followed for hydrocephalus with eventual peritoneal uh, shunt. He presents to the emergency room for this huge bilateral uh, hernia. Uh, I will tell you right away that this infant unfortunately died of severe bronchitis before his hernia was taken care of. But I presented to you because the management of this giant hernia was really unusual and significantly challenging in terms of surgical management. And it was the first time that we were confronted with this kind of, uh, uh, of hernia. We ask ourselves uh, a lot of questions. Uh, will he tolerate excessive increase of intra-abdominal uh, pressure? Uh, do you, or should we use a mesh and what kind of, of mesh? So for the first question, we were of course going to operate because in any case, the neurosurgeon deemed necessary the repositioning of the ventricular peritoneal catheter, which as you saw earlier, was in the hernia sac. For the second and third question, we were going to start by operating the right side where the, uh, there was the chant catheter and we were going to assess the intra-abdominal uh, pressure tolerance. Um, so, in fact, loss of domain of intra-abdominal cavity is one of the main problems in the management of giant inguinal hernia. We also wondered if the two techniques, that was resection of hernia content and intra-abdominal volume increase procedure, could be applied in our case. As for the last question, we also plan to put a vital uh, mesh. So, about the use of mesh in children, mesh is almost never used because closure of the neck of the sac with suture is sufficient. The use of mesh in children is unusual and controversial. Nevertheless, we consider that in some cases, its use may be justified. So uh, this question arises especially during adolescence. Uh, adolescents represent a gray zone between children and, and adults, and there is no consensus on the most appropriate operation for inguinal hernias in these patients. Several studies have raised the subject and these have raised the question whether high ligation in adolescents was enough. And the conclusion was that uh, high ligation of the hernia sac in adolescence is effective and has an acceptable risk of uh, uh, recurrence. Uh, some other, um, the, the review of literature, literature uh, compared 
the treatment of teen adolescent inguinal hernia uh, between pediatric surgeon and general surgeon. As, and, uh, as we see, um, for, uh, for, for example, a choice for repair of a routine adolescent inguinal hernia uh, repair, uh, where pediatric surgeon choose open high uh, ligation, ligation uh, open or laparoscopic high uh, ligation. So in conclusion, for the same routine adolescent inguinal hernia, pediatric surgeon and other surgeon, general surgeon choose a different procedure. There are other uh, questions, such as uh, the, the systematic exploration of the contralateral side, knowing that uh, two uh, and, uh, of th uh, three of patients uh, who have a persistent peritoneal vaginal duct do not develop a hernia. Uh, the, uh, the, um, the last question about uh, which uh, is the true gold standard laparoscopic versus open uh, inguinal hernia, uh, I think uh, uh, actually we think that laparoscopic uh, approach will be uh, the, the true gold uh, standard. So um, in conclusion, I indirect inguinal uh, hernia in children are common, and their repair is one of the most common operations of pediatric surgeons performs during daily work. Direct inguinal hernias, femoral hernias, and other atypical hernias in the inguinal region are seen less frequently and often present atypically, because missing these entities may result in serious complication. Uh, every pediatric surgeon should be thoroughly familiar with all of them. As always, a careful history and physical examination are the key to diagnostic. And thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kartney, for the nice uh, presentation. We will give you the opportunity to answer the question in the discussion uh, part. Now, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, my friend and colleague, Dr. Nahle Kshish. Dr. Kshish is working in Monastir Medical uh, School and Fatuma Bourguiba Pediatric uh, Surgery Department. She is very active and had a lot uh, of uh, articles in the literature. Uh, now, Dr. Kshish will speak about uh, a particular uh, hernia, femoral hernia. We will listen to you, Dr. Kshish. Thank you for this introduction. So I want, uh, first of all, to thank the uh, Tunisian Association of Pediatric Surgeons to allowing me to participate in this we webinar. So I will share my screen. So my presentation is entitled Pediatric Femoral Hernia, a challenging clinical presentation. So as an introduction, as we know, hernias are the most common pathology that pediatric surgeon encountered. Femoral hernia occur infrequently in adults and even less in children that, uh, and account less than 1% of whole hernias with a predilection on the right side. Age group ranged from four to 10 years old. And we know that femoral hernia is a girl's pathology, but some authors reported a near equal sex distribution. Sorry. So the inguinal and the femoral hernia are known as the growing hernia because they occur in the growing uh, area. The close relationship of femoral hernia to other hernias, its rarity and its aspecific symptoms, which mimic the inguinal hernia clinical presentation. In addition, many pediatric surgeons could have a limited experience with this type of hernia. From this uh, point of view, femoral hernia is considerable clinical problem in childhood. And as a result, delayed diagnosis or mid-diagnosis can occur in more than 40% of cases. The etiology of femoral hernia remains unclear and debated. So several congenital or acquired factors have been published and proposed by others as a further etiological factors, such as enlarged femoral ring, increased intra-abdominal pressure, or previous inguinal surgeries. But the most popular hypothesis is 
endorsed by McVie and Savage, which is a congenital neural insertion of the posterior inguinal wall on cuprous ligament results in enlargement of the humoral ring. Let's move to the principal key landmarks which, have, which we, will, we have to understand. So the femoral sheath is made by the extension of the transversal fascia anteriorly, the iliac fascia posteriorly, and the inguinal ligament superiorly. It contains the femoral artery, the femoral vein, and the femoral canal, separated by septa. The canal, the femoral canal is a rectangular structure with less than 1.3 centimeters long. And the canal's open portion is called the femoral ring which is a rectangular shaped structure restricted anteriorly by inguinal ligament, medially by lacunar ligament, and posteriorly by the confectional ligament or the copper ligament. The small bowel can move into the canal in the setting of femoral hernia and push out the cephanous opening, which is the hole of the fascia lata. So we have from the cephanous opening, which is the hole of the fascia lata. So here we have two places with tight borders, which may cut off the blood supply with a high risk of ischemia. Sorry. As I said before, here is the canal sheath with the femoral artery, the femoral vein, and the femoral canal, the pectinal ligament posteriorly, the inguinal lig ligament medially, and the ligament, the inguinal ligament uh, superiorly. Here we have the siphonous, uh, the siphonous opening, which is the hole of fascia lata. So in, uh, in, in clinical examination, uncomplicated femoral hernia appear as soft and non and outer of the pubic tubercle. This swelling is not controlled by digital uh, occlusion of the external and the internal inguinal ring. These findings are very important to distinguish femoral hernia from other hernia, especially inguinal one. So to highlight the importance of a meticulous clinical examination, and in 1983, Marshall reported having 90% diagnosis accuracy only by awareness of the possibility of femoral hernia and a careful examination. There's still no ideal diagnosis method or gold standard technique for femoral hernia. We can use ultrasonography in cases of doubtful physical examination or in the case of acute swelling setting uh, in order to differentiate incarcerated femoral hernia from inguinal lymphadenics. Ultrasonography must prepare the inguinal ligament with the valsaval maneuver, which increases the abdominal pressure, which can be performed to provoke herniation. Laparoscopy provides an optimal panoramic view of the abdominal wall anatomy. So hernia is no longer viewed as a protrusion of the form of the abdominal wall, but seen in opposite viewpoint. In addition, laparoscopy is a safe approach in herniography. Surgical management. All femoral hernia must be operated because incarceration was reported to be more frequently with femoral hernia than others growing hernia, 
due to its rigid borders. The amontum has been detected in most of incarcerated hernia, but a variant as well as strangulation may occur in some of patients. That's why early surgical repair is recommended. So there's still no consensus or on what the simplest, most, effic most efficacious or durable approach would be. We can use open approach, laparoscopic repair, hybrid lap or hybrid approach. It's difficult to draw a conclusion on the topic of treatment of femoral hernia because uh, there are so uh, many techniques. But by reviewing literature, I tried to uh, identify some surgical guidelines. So the hernia sac ligations alone as a treatment for, for, uh, of femoral hernia is enough because it leads to high risk of recurrence ranged from 2 to 13% uh, of cases. The main milestone of the, the treatment of femoral hernia is narrowing femoral, fem, uh, femoral canal. The use of uh, prosthetic material in the children and absorbable or not absorbable sutures is, are debated. So open uh, approach can be performed via inguinal or femoral incision, but some authors reported high uh, recurrences with uh, femoral incision. For the narrowing of femoral canal, no consensus exists regarding the surgical treatment of choice. We can use the Lockwood technique, which is securing, securing the Cooper ligament to the iliopubic pubic tracts, which is uh, originated from the inguinal uh, ligament and the fascia transversalis. We can use bassini repair, which, uh, which, uh, which is the suturing of the inguinal ligament with the pectinal fascia, or the little procedure, with, which is the closing of the femoral ring by using the pectinal, the pectinal fascia, femoral sheath, and lacunar, and lacunar ligament. The preferred technique, uh, according to McVie, is to use a transversalis fascia pedicle flap to close the femoral canal. No, uh, each technique has uh, its own advantages and disadvantages. And no matter what uh, we, use um, we use technique, we have to take care and uh, to worry about the femoral vessels. Laparoscopic repair is performed by intraperitoneal approach with three or only one trocar. We can use also also, laparoscopic repair by extraperitoneal approach. Here, I have a video of laparoscopic repair of strangulated left femoral hernia. The positive diagnosis was done preoperatively. It's a case of female with four days of nausea and vomiting. So, uh, gentle uh, traction of the hernia and we discover that the small uh, bowl was unca incarcerated. Creation of peritoneal flap using hook cutlery from the uh, anterior abdominal uh, wall. It's a meticulous uh, dissection in order to avoid injury of uh, the vessels. Then reduction of the hernia sac The hernia sac is reduced. Now we have a good view of the epigastric vessel superiorly and the cuprous ligament inferiorly. Then a mesh is uh, the then the defect and the femoral ring is covered by a mesh, and the uh, peritoneal flap is. Uh, uh, put into the femoral mesh. Here, another video. 
by an extraperitoneal approach showing the femoral hernia defect by extraperitoneal laparoscopy. So here is the femoral ring viewed by extraperitoneal approach. Hybrid approach facilitate the open infrainguinal closure by identification and liberation of the hernia sac supported by laparoscopic transillumination. Our experience, we have, uh, we have 19 uh, patients had 22 femoral hernia re repairs over a 25 year period, age ranged from two and 12 years with a mean age of five years. Preoperative diagnosis was done correctly in, in uh, 13 cases. Of the nine mis misdiagnosis cases, four were found to have ephemeral hernia intraoperatively following a negative inguinal exploration. Five others were found to have femoral hernia one month to 12 months after inguinal hernia repair. Femoral approach was used in 18 cases in 18 cases, an inguinal approach in four cases. The femoral ring was closed in all cases using little procedure, and in four, in four cases, the McPhee procedure. Only one recurrent hernia reoperated on using little procedure, following, following up is uh, ranged from three and 25 years. We have no case of recurrence. And as a conclusion, femoral hernia is rare and diagnostically challenging presentation in childhood by awareness and careful clinical examination alone, femoral hernia can be correctly diagnosed and it must be diagnosed, diagnosed preoperatively by meticulous clinical examination and it must be uh, operate considered in all cases of negative inguinal exploration in order to avoid reoperation of the patient with increase, increase morbi increasing morbidity. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kshish. So, uh, uh, Dr. Nouri, uh, you can uh, begin uh, the discussion. If you have, thank uh, you, anybody. thank you. Last fact, I I would like to ask uh, Chiru if uh, for the female about inguinal hernia, does he use the inversion of the sac to uh, for the treatment of inguinal hernia in the in the female? Thank you very much, Dr. Fee, for these uh, interesting questions. Uh, as you know, because we speak about this point uh, several times, uh, I started adopting this technique about 30 years ago with Philippe Montupé. For this reason, we adopted several techniques, including the inversion of the sac. Now, after 30 years experience, we use for all the patients the same technique. In boys and girls, uh, a poor string suture around the internal orifice. I think that uh, there are several techniques that you can adopt uh, in laparoscopy as the pull string suture, the N-shaped suture, or there is also the technique described by Darius Patoski, the pierce. And I think in expert ends, they give similar result. At the beginning, we adopted the inversion technique to close the sac, but now we prefer to use always the pull string. So sure. For the hydrocell or for the uh, cyst of the cordon, do you use laparoscopy or you advise open surgery? In general, for hydrocell, uh, I prefer uh, to use open surgery because uh, sometimes, for example, if you have uh, a, a kist of the cordon, it's difficult to treat them in laparoscopy. For this reason, I think uh, it's easier for uh, these patients to use open surgery. I think at the end, you have to use uh, the 
easiest procedure for a very, very indication. I think for hydrocele is a better inguinal approach and as for hernia is preferable laparoscopic approach in my mind. I mean, yes, there's a question for Dr. Ciro Esposito. Uh, what is the sensitivity and specificity of Goldstein test in diagnosing contralateral uh, uh, angular hernia? Should it be used in routine practice? Uh, as I told you, we, we use Goldstein tests at the beginning of our experience. But now I think in the last 20 years, we use routinely laparoscopy to approach hernia. For this reason, uh, it's not necessary to perform a test before treating because you introduce the optic uh, into the umbilical orifice and you can see if there is a contralateral patency. As for the incidence of contralateral patency, it depends uh, from prematurity, but in general is variable between uh, 20 and 40%. For this reason, I think, uh, uh, using laparoscopy, you enter in the abdominal cavity and you can check easily both sides. Uh, do you have any comment about Pierce technique in boys? I think uh, that uh, uh, Darius uh, Patoski described this interesting technique that use a needle transparently to close the ring. It's a mixed technique because it's a little bit percutaneous, a little bit uh, in laparoscopy. Uh, I think, as I told you, uh, uh, in laparoscopy, we use the same technique that we adopt in open surgery, but with a different approach. And in open surgery, you ligate uh, the peritoneal vaginal duct, uh, and in laparoscopy, we do the same. And I think, uh, for me, uh, I no experience in Pierce technique. I saw a lot of, of videos of Darius. I think uh, that probably it's easier to correct the hernia in laparoscopy, at least for me. Uh, Dr. Ciro Esposito, your presentation makes many questions. So uh, Dr. Shahata, greetings from uh, the salutation from Dr. Shahata, the president of the uh, UPSA of uh, Egypt uh, Association of Pediatric Surgery. So Dr. Sharif Shahata, uh, his question is, uh, as we are simulating what is done in our in open uh, procedure, why not uh, complete disconnect, uh, disconnection of the peritoneum even uh, above the vas before taking your uh, purse string as closer, has higher post closure hydros uh, hydros? Yes, the, uh, Samesh is a friend and uh, uh, as always, uh, he, he gives us uh, interesting questions. We perform always an eye ligation of the sac at the level of the internal inguinal ring. I think uh, we prefer to cut uh, not totally the peritoneum because avoid the risk to damage uh, the vast deference and the inner spermatic vessel. For this reason, we cut for about uh, 300 degree, but we, we leave the peritoneum attached on the vas and on the inner spermatic vessel, but you can have uh, a good pushing suture. And above all, as I told you, uh, sectioning uh, the peritoneum, the distal part of the sac collapses. And above all, you have no tension with the close, uh, the pushing. For sure, you can section all around, but I think it's preferable avoid risking to section on the vas deferens or uh, on the inner spermatic vessels. Sharif Shahata ask you also about um, um, a, a patient more than six years or adolescent, do you uh, uh, treat him only by closing the sac or do you make any construction of the muscle? Thank you very much for these interesting questions. Uh, uh, at the beginning, in case of huge hernia, in general, if uh, uh, at the beginning of our experience with Philippe Montupé and with Felix Scheer, with, for hernias larger than 10 millimeter of diameter, we prefer to close also muscle 
but I think that now is not necessary because also we close also huge hernia only closing uh, the peritoneum and we have uh, no recurrence. And as I told you in the, in the uh, last 950 hernias, we have no recurrence. And this is a procedure that uh, in our unit perform also trainees because uh, uh, I think the important thing is to perform laparoscopic routinely. For this reason, training and senior surgeon have to be able to not intracorporeally without problem. However, it's not necessary to, to, say, to close the muscle. Now we also for you journeys, we prefer to close only the peritoneum. And we perform a squishing test, pushing on the scrotum to check if you perform a gold spruce, a gold, uh, a, a good uh, pull string uh, and uh, we have no problem. Maybe a, a practical question about adolescent. How much do you recommend for them to uh, stop playing sport after operation for hernia? In general, uh, after uh, operation on hernia or for uh, uh, test is for cryptorchidism. We prefer uh, to stop uh, sport activity for three, four weeks uh, uh, in general to avoid the trauma or hematoma. We, we, we give this advice uh, to, uh, to, to boys. Also, if not strictly necessary, to prefer to give this advice to the families. Uh, uh, another question, uh, us uh, usually for Dr. Esposito, in female inguinal hernia associated to ovarian ectopia, what approach you uh, uh, adapt? Uh, always uh, uh, laparoscopy, and uh, if there is uh, an uh, incarcerated uh, ovary, you can reduce it easily uh, in the abdominal cavity. And then the advantage in laparoscopy sometimes, if there is an incarcerated ovary, there are some adhesions from the ovary with uh, the peritoneum of the internal inguinal ring. You can section the adhesion and you can close easily, but we prefer to approach always in laparoscopy. The Dr. Ben Malik, a question from Dr. Riyadh. Uh, uh, can we treat femoral hernia by purse string suture? The yes. question is not for Yes, me. we can use this technique, but we have to um, pay attention and to take care of uh, the femoral vessels. But uh, this technique uh, has been described by some others. We can use it. Okay. To, to share with uh, some question to Dr. Karakni uh, from Dr. Shif Shahat also. Donc, uh, uh, non opening of uh, fascia in inguinal hernia can be okay for children less than two years, uh, but older it should be opened as described by Gross, which is the more classic and common. Micro, micro, micro. Yes, sir, micro. Mike. Okay. So the, the Mitchell Bank procedure cannot be uh, employed in all cases of pediatric uh, hernia uh, with undescended uh, testes and uh, associated hernia. The external oblique fascia should be inside. And in cases of large hydrocele with, uh, with hernia and incarcerated hernia, incising the fascia will facilitate the, the operation. Okay, a uh, uh, question from a uh, citation for Dr. Rafiq uh, Shalabi from uh, Egypt. Uh, do you consider suturing the, of the uh, muscular arch to uh, ilio uh, public uh, tract is the internal, uh, is the internal, excuse me, the question of Dr. Uh, Rafiq Shalabi. Uh, you have the question, I mean? To, to the iliopubic tract? 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, so um, we consider it uh, especially when we have a wide internal uh, ring and in, in incarcerated hernia where the, there is a, a lot of inflammation, we reinforce high ligation by suturing the, the muscular arc to uh, idiopathic uh, tract. Yes. Uh, Dr. Shif Shahat asked uh, Dr. Shiro Esposito if we have a contralateral open process of uh, two millimeter or orifice uh, diameter, do you interfere or consider it uh, negative? I think uh, also if we found uh, a small orifice on the other side, we close with a stitch. If you have a small orifice, it's not necessary to perform a poor string. You can put a simple stitch or an X stitch to close it because also if the orifice is too small, you can have an hydrocele postoperatively for this reason. Also, if you found a small opening, you close it uh, with, uh, with a, a stitch. Mondor Haddad is asking Shiro, what are your views about no ligation of the sac? <laughs> Mondor, how are you? It's always a pleasure to receive uh, questions from you. This is a debated point because, uh, yes, uh, I think uh, uh, Munter is uh, also a good experience in this field uh, and uh, some surgeons prefer only to cut all around the superficial peritoneum but without close. Uh, and in this way there is a, they create a scar and then uh, the, the defect will close spontaneously. Yes, it's an alternative but if you are inside in laparoscopy I think it's safer to section, but also to close the periorificial peritoneum with uh, a suture, a pull string. I think it's safer for the child. Uh, Dr. Mohamed Nassif he, he has a question uh, for uh, Ciro. Um, he has a good experience with extraperitoneal uh, approach. Uh, so the question, do you agree that extraperitoneal techniques could have more advantages? And can you uh, share uh, as your experience in this top? I have uh, no experience in extraperitoneal approach. At the beginning of uh, my laparoscopic experience uh, in the 90, I, I started to learn this procedure from adults and the adults perform a lot of preperitoneal approach, extraperitoneal approach for hernias. But I think that in pediatric patients, there are no indication and I have no experience. There I mean, is a, a question from Bassem Al Abbasi. He asks you, uh, in case of recurrence, which uh, after open surgery, do you recommend laparoscopy? I think the answer is, is yes, and it's a, a very nice alternative to treat recurrence after open surgery. What do you think, Shiro? Yeah, yes, I agree with you completely. Uh, in case of recurrence, we have to approach uh, the, uh, the recurrence in laparoscopy because sometimes, as I told you, in case um, that sometimes you can have a double defect uh, in the same patients, you can have direct defect and also direct hernia. And if you close, close only one, you remain the other. And in laparoscopy, you can easily identify the defect that is the cause of hernia. For this reason, in case of recurrence, absolutely laparoscopy is the gold standard technique to treat the recurrence of uh, inguinal hernia after open repair. I, I have a, a, a question um, to Professor Chiro, if you allow me. Yes. Yes, please. Um, I wanted the, uh, to, to ask you, um, were you confronted with the, uh, this kind of giant hernia? And what do you think about using mesh uh, in, um, in infants of two or three uh, years old? Mm. No, I, I, I never use uh, mesh uh, to close pediatric hernia. Sometimes, um, uh, in case of uh, direct hernia, if the orifice is too big to reinforce uh, the closure, we use uh, 
lateral ligament of the bladder to reinforce the closure. We, we, we position a stitch on a lateral ligament to reinforce the closure, but I never use mesh in pediatric patients. I have no experience. Thank you. Uh, another another question in um, uh, in laparoscopic for incarcerated hernia, the, redu the reduction can be a challenge with the edema of uh, hernia contents. What are uh, what are your tricks for successful reduction without complication like perforation? Some tricks to uh... is for me. Uh, laparoscopic, yeah, laparoscopic. For you. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. I think that uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, thanks to mere relaxation, it's easier to reduce yeah. the hernia in laparoscopy. And uh, you have to use uh, two Joan forceps to reduce because Joan forceps are a traumatic. We use three millimeter instrument for this reason. They are a traumatic on the intestinal loops. And if you have problem to reduce, you can push from the scrotum, your assistant, you can push, help you to reduce the loops inside. And thanks to my relaxation, you have a good reduction. And as I show you the, in, a, in one of my videos, the advantage of laparoscopy is that you can check the status of the loops after reduction, because sometimes there is edema there is a vascular problem. And we, if you reduce in open and you put the loops inside, you have no possibility to check the loop status. In laparoscopy, you, fan, you can check if the loops are well uh, and then you can close. But I think in laparoscopy, thanks to mere relaxation, using uh, Joan forceps and a pushing from the scrotum, you can reduce all the incarcerated hernias. Christian Pays ask uh, if there is more recurrence in case of incarcerate hernia treated by laparoscopy. Uh, no, not in our experience. Uh, at the beginning of our experience, um, uh, we published a paper with uh, Philippe Montupé and Felix Scheer on the first 1,000 cases. Uh, and at the beginning, we adopted the uh, non-resorbable suture to close uh, uh, the peritoneum. And we have three, four percent of recurrence. Then we uh, switched to uh, non-resorbable suture and then the incidence of recurrence is less than one percent. In, in my series, in the, in the last 1000 is zero. But I think the key factor is to use uh, a non-resorbable suture. After uh, recurrence uh, the we treat in laparoscopy and the, the incidence of recurrence is the rate of standard hernia. Uh, there is another uh, qu a question of uh, from uh, Zimbabwe, Dr. Torai uh, Zimhu. Um, what are uh, your thoughts about the section of the hernia sac in laparoscopic repair, repair, but instead of per string suturing? One use glue to close the peritoneum. Yes, uh, is in very interesting questions because uh, we recently we published a paper on this topic with uh, Paolo De Coppi of Great Ormond Street Hospital because uh, using the glue can be a good alternative uh, to laparoscopy above all because you can inject the glue inside the. the internal inguinal ring and then they close spontaneously. But you can have a problem of allergy. And uh, for this reason, uh, we adopted this procedure in uh, rabbits and we compare the uh, closure with glue with laparoscopy, but there are similar results. For this reason, we prefer to use uh, uh, laparoscopy. I think that uh, Sometimes uh, if you uh, need uh, a little bit or a drop of glue to complete the closure, you can use it, but uh, I prefer to use always uh, a suture, not only glue, but you can use because there are a lot of glue that you can use inside the abdominal cavity. Uh, uh, another question to Dr. Karkhni in case of open uh, procedure in left uh, side angular uh, repair, 
does anyone of this uh, use laparoscopic exploration for the other side in male or for male patients? I think, um, especially in laparoscopy, we always look to the other side. And now, the, uh, in the open procedure? The open, no. no. In, in, in the, the left open. side, the uh, inguinal uh, repair. You, you, can, you can introduce a telescope from the, the other hernia to see the other, uh, the other side. This is in the this. question, I think. Yeah. A question to everyone from you, for people, for uh, medical... I saw this. I, th I saw this in uh, in uh, Trousseau, they, they, they are doing this, uh, especially for left hernia, because we have more hernia in the right side uh, that are associated. So they introduce a telescope from the, the hernia to see if yeah. there is a contralateral one. You have any experience with this uh, technique, uh, Shiro? Yes, yes, we adopted this technique when I was in Marseille with uh, Arnaud de la Rue and Jean-Michel Guiss. Jean-Michel Guiss, yeah. We treated the uh, inguinal hernia sometimes in open surgery. Then we insert uh, in the sac uh, an optic of 30 or 45 degrees to see on the other side. Uh, but I think that using laparoscopy is easier because you put into malicus and then to check both sides. For this reason, after 30 years, uh, we standardized the technique. At the beginning, we adopted this technique was interesting, but is more complicated because sometimes you have not a good vision. It's preferable to put the opting in the navel and you can check easily. For pediatric surgeon who use open surgery, does ultrasound, which has known a lot of development, uh, is it able to uh, visualize or to make the diagnosis of control lateral um, canal, peritoneal canal? What's your opinion, Karkni? I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Um, when, uh, for people who, who use only open surgery, does yes. the ultrasound, which has known a lot of development now, uh, can be able to make the diagnosis of of um, uh, of uh, a canal permanent uh, per, uh, per, uh, a canal a peritoneal vaginal process in the control lateral um, hernia? Um, I think clinical examination is the key of diagnosing um, a contralateral hernia. And we ask always the, the, the parents uh, if there is a, a, a vault in, um, uh, in the inguinal uh, region. Um, I don't think that uh, ultrasound uh, can, can help us. And if the, the, inguin, if the hernia uh, isn't here clinically, um, even if there is a patent um, uh, Process. But the process, we will not uh, operate it. Uh, another question from Dr. Lafewi. Uh, uh, thank you for the. I have a question about a technique of uh, surgery in infants of three months. Usually, a spinal anesthesia is used. What is your alternative at this age? Technique of surgery in infants of three months, usually a spinal anesthesia is used. What is your alternative at this age? Yusra? Uh, um, we, we haven't really the, the experience of laparoscopy in, in this age. So uh, we use the open uh, technique. Uh, if can I... Uh, a comment on this point. I think the only disadvantage of a laparoscopy for inguinal hernia is the general anesthesia and myorelaxation because uh, to perform a laparoscopy, you need the uh, general anesthesia and myorelaxation. And sometimes to correct an inguinal hernia is not necessary to do general anesthesia. I think probably the only uh, problem related to laparoscopy because to perform a laparoscopy you need the general anesthesia and relaxation, but I think there are too many advantages in laparoscopy compared to open surgery. For this reason, 
in our unit, we use uh, laparoscopy in all the patients with inguinal hernia, routinely. Uh, there is ma many questions about uh, Pierce technique. Uh, if the, uh, any experience of uh, with Pierce technique and trips and tricks? No. I have no experience. Uh, no experience, yeah. Uh, technique. Uh, I, I know because in general with Darius we compare the bot technique uh, during courses uh, that we organize, and the Pierce technique is used uh, uh, um, a needle that you introduce transparently to close uh, the, the, the ring. I think he, uh, in laparoscopy it's easier, but it's a, absolutely a good technique to perform. Probably Pierce technique is more difficult uh, technically than standard laparoscopy, because standard laparoscopy you are inside, you put the needle, you close and you remove, and you work uh, with two instrument uh, as uh, in all laparoscopic procedure, but it's a, a, an excellent technique too. Two questions for Yusra. Is sliding over considered as emergency finding? Question from Dr. El Guhari. We, we operate, um, uh, uh, we operate the, um, not really emergency, but um, we have to slide the, the infant and, uh, uh, and yes, we operate it. <laughs> okay. Another question for incarcerated hernia that is able to be reduced, do you operate immediately or wait? If it's, it, uh, it's reduced, we, uh, we wait uh, 24 or 48 uh, hours, uh, so the inflammatory uh, process reduces, then we operate the, the, the child. Uh, there is a question, a question for uh, Dr. Shiro Esposito from Sharif Shahata. For uh, can, uh, Shiro can give uh, a comment of Tanta uh, algorithm for laparoscopic pediatric hernia uh, published in his last uh, uh, 2018. You know it? Uh, no. Okay. Dr. Shiro Shahata, I ask you. We, we if you have. A, from uh, Upsa, from uh, Egypt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the question exactly? Uh, give a, a, a comment, a comment uh, for Tanta al al uh, algorithm. For uh, which, is, which is the Tanta algorithm? Uh, uh, published in uh, journal uh, GLAST two thousand and eighteen. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There is another question, uh, I mean, Yes, if, it, if there is a big indirect angular hernia that does, uh, that does need some sort of repair, still you prefer laparoscopic approach routinely for indirect angular hernia, big yes. ones? Yes, for sure. For me, in my experience, in general, sometimes you don't know in advance if there is an indirect defect because uh, the mother tell you that there is a, a, a bulge, there is an hernia, but you don't know if there is a direct or indirect for this reason you discover during the procedure. And we, we prefer, we are in laparoscopy and we close in laparoscopy. In case of direct hernia, in the majority of cases, we found a huge lipoma in the, in the hernia. For this reason, we resect the lipoma with the hook and then we close the peritoneum. And as I told you, sometimes if you have a, a huge defect, as I show it in one of my videos, you can use a lateral ligament of the bladder to reinforce. In case of uh, incarcerate hernia, that you arrive to reduce it, do you operate laparoscopically immediately or do you wait two or three days so the inflammation will disappear. I prefer to operate if the patient is, uh, is in the hospital 
is ready for operation, we can operate uh, in the same day. It's not necessary to, to wait to treat. To wait. I think the, there is another question. Uh, what is your opinion about uh, cauterization of the sac before ligating it uh, laparoscopically? Yeah. We, we, we prefer to cut the sac and we coagulate. The problem, I prefer to coagulate a little bit the peritoneum before section it because sometimes there are small vessels on the peritoneum. You can have a small bleeding and then after we have a bad view. For this reason, I prefer to coagulate a little bit the peritoneum and then to cut. As I told you, I prefer to use the hook, but you can use also the scissors as you prefer. Another question, uh, did you, uh, for Shiro also, did you not any case of intestinal obstruction due to uh, adhesion post-op uh, post uh, follow-up? No, 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 we never uh, uh, have uh, this kind of complication and we uh, uh, sometimes we have reoperated patients that we operated for inguinal hernia for other indication. For this reason, we go with the optic to check uh, the inguinal region. And in general, uh, the suture were uh, covered from peritoneum. For this reason, there is no adhesion. The suture that you perform during the hernia repair was covered completely from peritoneum and there is no adhesion at the level of the inguinal hernia site. Congratulations, you have answered to all the questions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I think there is another. Um, would you treat okay. bilateral hernia in uh, mini uh, preterm laparoscopically? And uh, what age should the new laparoscopic surgeon start with? Question from Arwa Haider. From Arwa Haider, yeah. For us in laparoscopy, there are no age limit to correct the hernia. The, the limit are the anesthetists, if they agree with you. <laughs> but um, I, our anesthetists are happy to correct in laparoscopy because all, also in newborn, and uh, they are happy because the surgery is faster compared to open surgery above all. If there is a bilateral closure in uh, Laparoscopy it is faster for this reason, and the anesthetists are happy, but is more a problem of the anesthetist than of the surgeon. However, in my experience, we have no, no limit. I, I think uh, I operated uh, the, the, the smaller infant is one kilo and a half, uh, uh, but you have no problem. You have a low gas pressure, three millimeter instrument, but you can do it. I think uh, uh, all the question, uh, with, with all the question. Uh, I mean, uh, there is another question. There are two other questions. Uh, first question from Christian Pais. Francois Beckmer prefers a continuous future. What do you think? I think uh, is a, there are different uh, uh, solution. As I told you, we compare sheer uh, technique uh, and Montupé give similar results also with a continuous suture as Francois perform is absolutely the same. Uh, the principle is to close very well the internal inguinal orifice and uh, but there are several techniques that you can adopt with similar results. Uh, and yeah, there yeah. is recurrence. Oh, excuse me. Okay. okay. If okay, there is a recurrence of a hernia done by laparoscopy, will you reoperate it laparoscopically? For sure. Yes, yes, for sure. In this way, you can check uh, what happens during the first procedure and then you can treat. And above all, in laparoscopy, there is the advantage that you can record the procedure. Also, for uh, the teaching, uh, Purposes is better because you can show to the trainees the different possibility, the different techniques. Um, Meher Zaid ask you. Zaim, Meher Zaim. Professor Meher Zaim. Meher Zaim. 
uh, in case of inguinal hernia uh, associated to understand the testes, would you perform orchidopexy simultaneously laparoscopically? Good questions. It, uh, it depends uh, if the patient uh, has uh, an intradominal test. Testes. Yeah. Uh, or the, or the test is in the canal in the same uh, anesthesia to avoid uh, performing a second anesthesia after. I, I, I think for the child it's uh, preferable to correct uh, during the same procedure. It depends also on the age, but in general in the same procedure. Uh, for Ciro, also another question from uh, Dr. Riyad Ben Malik. Uh, are there any trucker uh, complication in your experience? Uh, no, because uh, no, for hernia, I, at the beginning of my experience, 30 years ago, we have uh, some complication from the trogar insertion. But now, with the uh, transillumination, with the optic, we, as for the first trogar, we use always uh, trans umbilical open laparoscopy. For this reason, we introduce a blunt tip trogar. For this reason, we have no complication. Then, to introduce the other two trogars, uh, we uh, perform transillumination of the abdominal wall to check if there are no vessels uh, in the abdominal wall when you introduce the trogar, because the main risk is that you can uh, uh, damage a vessels during the trogar introduction. With transillumination, there is no uh, danger. And then if you have problem to introduce the trogar, the second, Trocar in Nepal, learn to me is to optic trocar in this way to avoid risk. He called the Papa and Mama, and uh, you can avoid to introduce trocar of the optic in this way. You have no risk for the loops, only neonates you can adopt this technique. Thank you, uh, Shiro. Uh, Dr. Rafiq Shalabi asked you uh, when you use mesh for, uh, for pediatric uh, hernia repair. I, I, I never use it for, uh, for oh, pediatric hernia yes. yes. repair uh, the mesh. The only indication sometimes, but rarely, I adopt a mesh in case uh, of uh, anti reflux surgery for gastroesophageal reflux disease if there is a huge hiatal hernia. Sometimes I use a mesh, but I think it's the only indication, or for diaphragmatic hernia, but not for inguinal hernia. Do you think, Dr. Siru, is laparoscopy the gold standard for treating incarcerated hernia? A question from Dr. Radwan Ben Salah. Siru? I think there is a. Yes, yes, I think. Uh, to treat incarcerated is the gold standard technique. Except if there is uh, an occlusion with a uh, very uh, important distension of the intestine, maybe, it will be risky to put the, the trocar. No? As, as, as I told you, as for, for the first trocar, we introduce uh, in trans umbilical lobe and laparoscopy with a blunt trocar for this reason, you have no risk. For the other trocars, if you have, uh, if there is dilated loops, uh, you can introduce uh, the secondary trocar into the trocar of the optic. This way you have no risk to damage the loops. But in general, with a little trocar. I think this is a complication. 20 years, uh, I think compli trocar's complications are rarely reported. Thank you, Siru. Uh, I think uh, there isn't uh, any question. Uh, I mean, there is another question. Uh, Dr. Nori? Last for Dr. Nahlek, she, if she's here. Yes. Uh, the question is, when uh, we have a complication in post-operative femoral hernia repair, what will be the option? I think he, uh, he mean um, 
In the case of femoral, uh, in, in the femoral hernia, I think um, the best um, way to treat uh, this uh, recurrence is uh, the laparoscopy repair. Yeah. If we used uh, the first time uh, the inguinal incision, uh, the best uh, way to repair this recurrence is to use the laparoscopic uh, repair in order to control the stretcher better than uh, inguinal uh, spiritual. I think that's all. We finish it with the question. <laughs> we'll finish on the question. Many thanks for uh, all the speakers. We we'll finish very quickly because he's very convincing. Shiro is very convincing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we respect, we respect uh, the time. We have uh, two hours with uh, all the speakers. Nala uh, Kshish, Yusra Karkhni, and uh, our uh, friend, uh, Dr. Siro Esposito. Uh, many thanks for all the participant, uh, participants in this webinar. Uh, there, uh, there is, uh, I, I think uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, 50, uh, 53 uh, countries in this uh, webinar are uh, uh, participate in this uh, webinar. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Amin. Thank you, Big Boss, Dr. Nouri. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, you, you have the, the, the final uh, word for this uh, webinar. I, I would like to thank you, first of all, the president of our association, Dr. Lasat Sahnoun, and second, uh, is uh, uh, all the, this young pediatric surgeon who are like Karkhani, like Nahla, they are really making very good work and finally, I respect a lot this uh, friendly mentality of Chiru, who, who is trying to encourage all pediatric surgeon and who has a very important open mind. And I hope that he will take care about himself and about coronavirus. And if you can have uh, quickly a vaccination against COVID, it will be a good idea to make your vaccination very soon. Shiro, you can, you can uh, uh, speak about uh, the, uh, the, the course. You can uh, say yes, it. Yes. Yeah, to remember, to remember all the word. Yes. All right, first of all, thank you very much. It's a true, true honor for me to be here. Thanks to the president of Tunisian Association and also his friend. And uh, as I told uh, Mario Mendoza, this is the president, myself as CEO and Nasia Kendalop from Paris, we will organize uh, a master of pediatric mini invasive surgery above all devoted to African surgeon. Is uh, We will cover uh, all the techniques of uh, uh, pediatric laparoscopy. Uh, there will be all the expert speakers, starting from Philippe Montoupé, Azad Najmaldi, François Beckmer, old friends. And we will be, uh, the, the, the chairman will be from uh, ESPES and from uh, African, from African countries of all the countries and we will receive more information via uh, mail. And as I told you, this uh, master will be free of charge for all African surgeon member of ESPES. Uh, and there is for them a special rate on 25 euro to be ESPES members and they can participate for free to the master and we receive at the end a certification of master in invasive surgery then we will give uh, at, an ESP, at the next ESPES meeting that we will be in Lugano in Switzerland in September uh, 21. 
we will receive more info in the next few days. And uh, I will thanks again in uh, your, your society for the invitation. And it was very interesting. Thank you very much for the lot of questions that we received as my experience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shiro, and uh, I, I wish to see you uh, in, in Tunisia uh, probably uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. With pleasure. Take care. Take care. Ciao. Okay. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Ciao, bye. Thank you.